Yo, and welcome to a month in review where I talk about all the notable games that I've played over the past month. So watch out for spoilers for all these games. But first, last time on a month in review. Will PR play Warframe again? Will he finish Dark Souls 2 and Sekiro? When will he get better ideas? So let's start with a game that I always wanted to play when I was younger, Katamari Damacy. I didn't have a PS2 when it was popular, but now that I have a PC, I, I mean, now that I bought a PS2 and a few games legally, I can play some games that I missed out on while growing up. Wow, that footage looks great. Are you sure that's from a regular PS2? Yo, stop trying to get me caught up. Yes, of course, it's just a regular PS2. Now, let's get into the story of the game from what I've played so far. You play as the son or one of the sons of the King of the Cosmos. And because he decided to wipe away all the stars in the sky, dickhead move, but all right, you and your Katamari, that little sticky ball thing you roll around, are tasked with creating new stars. So even from my probably wrong story description, you can tell that this game is weird, and the gameplay falls right in line with that. You control the prince and his Katamari using both thumbsticks, which unlike in a twin stick shooter, they're less independent of each other, and they need to be used in tandem to move around effectively which you will need to do because your goal is to pick up everything in the level, and as the ball gets bigger, you can pick up bigger things. Even people! But don't think too much about them floating in the cold darkness of space. This is a fun family game. I remember when I first saw this game when I was younger and thought that it was a more laid back and relaxing game, but now after playing it for a while, I realize that it's actually super hectic and chaotic. With the different hazards, time limited music, which is great by the way, there's always something vying for your attention, not to mention all the different items you're supposed to pick up to beat the level. This is a great pick up and play type of game with just the right amount of weird to always keep you engaged. Now here's some updates on some of the games that I've kept in my rotation from other month in reviews. Let's start with probably my most played game over the past few months, NBA 2K20. So on the My Career slash Park side, I finally reached 99 overall, which is like 100 times easier than reaching that same level in the past 4 or 5 years, and Park has been fun no! when it fucking works, but that's not usually what happens. The servers have been trashed for years, and you'd think that since they're using the same Park and Rec from last year, that it would be improved, but nope! Since I reached 99 overall, I don't really have any goals to reach anymore because Legend status is just out of reach, so I've made the switch to my team a little earlier than I usually do in the season. And this year, they've actually made a couple big changes to my team that I'm going to talk about. The first is position locking, which is something that really became a problem in 2K19, where people were running Galaxy Opal Giannis at the point and having Galaxy Opal Shaq and Yao at the 4 and 5. What the fuck is a Galaxy Opal? Oh uh, yeah, that's right, not everyone plays 2K. Let me explain. So there's bronze and silver, gold and emerald, sapphire and ruby. Amethyst is where it gets a little better usually. Diamonds great, pink diamonds greater. Always watch for Elgin Baylor, Galaxy Opals, where it ends and exactly where the fun begins. Now that you're up to speed, the only issue that I have with position locking is that 2K ruined it by monetizing the fuck out of this feature. So for example, these two cards are the exact same. The only difference between them is that one card can be a point guard and the other card can be a shooting guard. And this is the only example that I know, but how many more of these situations will happen throughout the season? The only change that they added that I think is fully great is the addition of the evolution cards. So these cards start around emerald or sapphire and can grow or evolve to higher levels. So far at the time of this recording, the highest level an evolution card can reach is pink diamond, but I'm sure they'll add one that goes up to galaxy opal soon enough. The only thing about EVO cars that I think are kinda overboard are the evolution requirements. Some of them require getting a thousand points or using them in 80 games, which makes sense because the mode in the game to some degree is inherently a grind, but jeez do some of these requirements suck. Going from one shooting game to another, this is by far the most mindless fun type of game in this list because I really only play this with friends. Aside from my friends only wanting to play on Shipment and Shoot House. So since the last video they put Rust in, and since I didn't play MW2 online I first thought that it was a cool little map, but after playing it for a little longer I realized that there's too many fucking sight lines. Every single area on this map has these little slits you can barely even spit through, but you can fucking bet that some dudes from across the map are gonna shoot you through them, and the fucking verticality in this map, oh my god that shit is so annoying, and on hardcore especially it's trauma inducing. Overall though, it's pretty cool I guess. I like the new content that they drop over the course of the season even though I think the communication and the drop rate of the content is a little sparse, but that's probably just because I'm impatient so I'm not really going to fault the game on that. Moving on from Modern Warfare, this will be the last time that I reference the last A Month in Review video, I promise. But 
I made the comment that so far this game is tied with Dark Souls 3 for my favorite From Software game. And now Sekiro is by far my favorite From Software game and honestly one of my favorite games of all time. But before going any further, I made a mistake in my last video about the game and said that you can only resurrect twice, which obviously isn't true since I now have three little circles right there, but that wiki only talks about two, so I did my research, the shit was still just wrong. But back to the game itself. One of the main reasons that I love the game is the combat. In terms of Soulsborne games, I haven't played Bloodborne, but it just looks like BS3 with guns. I think that this game is the hardest but most rewarding out of all the games I've played because of how the combat works. I mentioned this before, but the deflection mechanic is so great, even though some of the hitboxes are questionable. The clash and counter dance that you learn throughout the game makes this my favorite combat system of any game, fuck just from software games. You will feel unbelievably powerful with some of the deflections you make, and then in other situations, you will feel hopelessly outmatched and will need to adapt in a way that you just don't really get in other Soulsborne or really any other games that I've played. The second reason and main place where my love of this game started is this boss fight. The rematch with the guy who took your arm story wise is cool, but the way that he fights and the way that you get locked into a clash dance until one of you dies is amazing. And then the second phase where he starts lightning bending, oh my god, it's like perfection. If every fight in this game was just like this with its slightly different gimmicks, this may be my favorite game of all time. But even I know not to say some crazy shit like that off of one boss fight. Right now I'm at the second Guardian 8 boss fight. Nope! And because it's not a regular sword dude, it's kinda lame to me. But it is interesting at least. While I do love the katana that you have throughout the game, I do wish that there was an ability to have some control over either the aesthetics of the blade, or finding different blades like the mortal blade with different stats or abilities would have been perfect. I've been having so much fun with this game that it's in my top 5, and I don't even care if it's recency bias. This shinobi shit is dope, and the world needs way more of it. So that's what I've been playing over the past month. What have you guys been playing? Let me know in the comment section below, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. Thank you.